Okay, I think we want to be respectful of everyone's time, um, especially of the Swiss people in the room. I'm not sure if there's anyone else than me, but um, <laughs> perfect. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Uh, in this session, we are going to talk about how, like, some tips and tricks, if you will, uh, you have to manage Azure if you're using the shell, like Cloud Shell, PowerShell, Bash, and CLI. I'm going to show you some pretty cool new stuff. I try to give you some awareness uh, how you can manage your resources uh, and stuff like that. Again, this is not going to be a deep dive session. I'm trying to really give you multiple awareness things. There are other sessions later on which cover some of these topics, and I will try to call them out uh, during the, 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 that time uh, whenever I do. So let me quickly get this run uh, on. Okay. Thank you again uh, to all the sponsors, obviously. Without them, it would not be possible to do such things. So we always need to keep this in mind. I know um, it's, it's, it's sometimes for us, it's not like we're not focusing too much on it, but it's very important that we can do such events, um, that we have all these sponsors helping us. Uh, quickly to myself, uh, my name is Thomas Maurer. I'm a uh, program manager uh, for Azure Hybrid, like covering end-to-end -end scenarios, thinking about, like if you're familiar with Azure, thinking about Azure Stack, Windows Server, Azure Arc, uh, things like that. And obviously I'm a big uh, PowerShell enthusiast, <laughs> if you will. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to try to share some stuff here with you. I could not help myself to add some hybrid stuff into the session as well. So even if you're a person who not just manages things in Azure, but maybe uses uh, Azure to manage things which are running on-prem or even at other cloud providers, there's something in there for you too, right? So uh, be aware of that. So before I start my session, I'm not sure if you've ever been to one of my sessions. Um, in the one yesterday, we did not really do that. But usually, I like to talk about and teach people about Switzerland, right? So bear with me. I will tell a little bit about Switzerland, uh, uh, so things you, you probably haven't heard before. Uh, so that is how it looks like um, when I look out the window, obviously. Uh, it's like where I live. No, just kidding. Um, we not always have this postcard view. Uh, this is a typical Swiss data center. You can see the cows in front of it. Very typical for Switzerland. <laughs> it's actually a data center. It's not an Azure data center. I'm just saying, right? I'm not going to show anything uh, inappropriate here, but uh, it is a data center. Um, we obviously very well known for cheese, chocolate. By the way, are there some Belgian people uh, in the room? No one? Okay, if, any, if a Belgian person tries to tell you they have the best chocolate, it's not true. Right. <laughs> I see there are some enthusiasts for Belgian chocolate. We are also well known for watches and banks, and that's basically it. So that, that's what we are known for. Um, living in Switzerland is also uh, um, pretty cool because the flag is a big plus, right? You know, I'm sure you have heard that one before. Uh, but actually, we have a big flag. Uh, so first of all, it's kind of like the national like day uh, for Switzerland and they actually put up that big flag um, on the mountains. You can see here like with these little people here uh, doing all the work. I don't think they are little, but like they look little next to the flag. Uh, by the way, we also have an Air Force. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people don't know that, um, but only during office hours, right? Um, they're only operating during office hours. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, that changed. It's a very old article. We are now also, at least that's what they say. We are also operating now 24 7. Um, but yeah. And then obviously, um, they're very, like, obviously very cool, but sometimes they miss um, where they need to go, right? So they miss the wrong town. Now, the funny thing about that is not that they miss the town that can happen, right? Switzerland is very large. Um, <laughs> but the funny thing is that very cliche. They were flying over Jodingling Festival, um, which is also very Swiss. So, um, yeah. So good. That was it. Um, thank you for staying with me uh, to, and listen to how I teach uh, Switzerland. Um, by the way, the timer is not running. Just like if the AV person can check. Okay. Perfect. So we're going to talk about how to manage Azure, right? And there are a couple, if you look at managing Azure, there's not just one way of doing things. There is like things like we can use what we call our CLIs and PowerShell and our experiences to manage Azure. So we have, for example, also the Azure portal, which is absolutely a great way of doing certain things and guessing visibility. We have the CLI, we have PowerShell, we have CloudShell. Um, 
which we're going to dive into. Who in the room uses Cloud Shell or has used Cloud Shell before? Okay, lots of hands. That's good. That's good. Perfect. Um, and then obviously we also have automation tools. We have ARM, Bicep, uh, Azure Automation, Azure Functions. There's a great session, I think, by Pierre Romain uh, on functions and, and other stuff um, on Thursday. Is that correct? Tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow is. Oh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay, good. So make sure you check that out uh, when you come to, to build some automation there as well. Uh, some pretty cool stuff in that session. Um, so I got to focus on a couple of these and just show you some little tricks and, and how it, it works. But I want to really spend most of my time I will spend on Cloud Shell because I think it's a very important tool to understand, especially if you work with Azure. So we all know this problem probably. Like if you run um, uh, your commands here, uh, when you do like work with Azure, you probably need to update your PowerShell module from time to time. You need to go through and, and like make sure that you have updated tooling, right? Not just the PowerShell module, but also the CLI. And then there's a Docker CLI, there's kubectl. There's a ton of more stuff you probably need. And you need to constantly creep your admin workstation up to date, right? Uh, and obviously, we don't want to spend time to update our admin workstation, right? Um, so there is uh, something which we can can do about that with Cloud Shell. And so automation is obviously very important. I want to make sure that like we can take save some time and lower the cost and all that good stuff and then manage resources at scale. So let's talk about Cloud Shell, which is basically, if you think about it, not just a shell running in Azure, but it's kind of like our admin workstation running in Azure. And I will tell you also a little bit about the back, what is actually running in the background. Um, what, how do we make this actually possible? So let's have a quick look at what we actually have before I dive into demos. I, I promise you I have a ton of demos, which hopefully work. Um, so when you go into Cloud Shell, it's web-based, right? That's the default, but you can also have it in other places as well. But one of the big benefits is you're already authenticated, right? No AC login you need to do. Um, no, um, no login to that. You're already authenticated with the user, with your Azure AD user you use to log in into the portal. So that's cool. We offer different experience. Again, you can use PowerShell or Bash, uh, whatever you prefer. Um, so you have these two options there, uh, depending on what you want to do. Uh, and it's a private and secure environment. So it's not something like you share with someone else. It's really your own admin workstation per user basis, right? I think that is also important. And you can obviously modify and add things. We already installed a couple of management tools, and I will show you a little bit more about that and how you can actually figure out how we did that uh, and, and all that stuff. There already are a lot of tools. It's not just about Azure PowerShell and Azure CLI and all that. We also have some third-party things like kubectl, Docker, and a ton of other stuff. I'm going to show you that in just a bit. So let's dive in and have a look at... Cloud Shell itself. So for those who haven't really worked with Cloud Shell, um, let me get this. If you're in the Azure portal, the easiest way to go to Cloud Shell is here, this little button. You go up uh, and it will load up Cloud Shell. Um, and you can see here I chose the PowerShell thing. I will also show you, by the way, how to set this up, like how like the first time you run it, you need to actually do a couple of things. And I will tell you some tricks there uh, as well. So. Um, if you do then, like you're, like for example, you have your own home drive. So what is there, right? If I do look at, I have a couple of files here. Don't look at the mess I created. Um, you can see here I work often with Cloud Shell and just put some stuff there. Um, so I told you that tools are already installed. Let's do, for example, AC. Like you can see then I also have, for example, the Azure CLI uh, installed. I obviously have Azure PowerShell as well. And then like the great thing about this now, I just opened this up. If I just run this command, obviously it will show me all the VMs running in here. Um, and the good thing, what, why I showed you this is, like I didn't do a login or anything, right? I'm logged into the portal, that's why I'm already authenticated with the same user, so nothing taking care of that. Whatever I am and which tenant I am, which, uh, which uh, subscription I'm in, like that's, that's basically selected. So I wanna show you a couple of uh, other things. Obviously when we work with an admin workstation, we also want to obviously need some files, some scripts, maybe something to store. So when I go here and do it here, I have something called this cloud drive. And on that cloud drive right now, you can see here I have nothing. So let's create a random folder here. 
And sorry if I do it here, you can see here. I created now a file. I could now store um, scripts in this folder and so on. But where is that actually stored? What did I just do? So that's actually happening in a storage account. So let me quickly pull this down. So I have my, oh, sorry. I didn't want to, I want to show you first how you figure out um, this. So you can see here in the cloud shell, and I will show you how that is addressed. Um, it uses a storage account. And it uses, it creates also a file share uh, called for the, for the cloud drive where I now created that folder. Now, if you're managing storage account, you can see here, it's probably not that easy to find out like where it is. So there's a co uh, PowerShell commandlet um, to actually get to that. So it's called get cloud drive. If I run this, you can now find some more information where I'm actually running, what storage account I'm using, where is in which resource group is that, and what's the name. So you can see here, my storage account name is TT Cloud Shell um, 23 at the end. So let's quickly have a look at that storage account. And if I browse the file shares, you can see here I have a, a share called Cloud Drive. And if I click on that, you can now see here that I have a folder called random folder, that's the one I just created, right? So I could even now interact and start working with this. I could upload my files there and store stuff as I know. If I go to, um, let's go back to this cloud console, I'm gonna zoom in here. Um, if I click on cloud console, what I have here is an image file. And that's actually the file, I think it's around five gigabyte or limited to five gigabyte in size. That's where my home user stuff lives, right? So if I, I can, in Cloud Shell, I can also add modules and stuff like that. I can install stuff and store stuff. If I don't share, store it on this Cloud Drive file share, it will actually store it in that image file. And that can go up to one gig, uh, five gigs in size. Uh, again, I recommend if you have more files, don't do it like me, just store it in the Cloud Drive uh, file share. So that's something which gets mounted. So. See someone, I can zoom in again if you want to take a picture or something. So, <laughs> um, not like, well, you could potentially, I never tried to move it to be honest. Like, um, I mean, if it's the storage, like if the file share, you could sync the file share in theory. I don't know if I never tried the image file to be honest. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I never try to put the image file on different different subscriptions. But it's actually a good idea. Did someone try it in the room? Like, did someone do? Okay. It's actually a good idea. I need to check on that, um, if we can do it. Um, absolutely. It's not designed to be like that. Um, but it's obviously, if you work with different customers as a partner, um, it can make sense. So I understand the scenario, absolutely. Okay, so let's go back to Cloud Shell and have a look at some other stuff here. So um, again, I will not be able to show you everything, but let's go to my home, back to my home drive, and let's do a deer here. And what you can see here, I stored a couple of files. I, for example, have now this PowerShell script stored here. This is a script I use regularly to do something. I don't even know what I'm doing with it. Uh, but so what if I want to like work with that file? There's a couple of options now. Like you could obviously go to the storage account in the portal. You could use like uh, the storage tools we have and all that good stuff. But obviously we want to make it easy. So here you also have the possibility to, for example, download and up upload files. Or you could use a command called ex uh, export file and then do my script. And what happens is you can then just click here and say, okay, download the file, right? Um, and I could go and then modify it um, or whatever and upload it again, which is obviously not a very nice way of working with this. So there's another option. Um, obviously what we have, we have um, tools installed like VI and Emacs and stuff like that, which come with a Linux container. Um, I'm not like, I'm not going to use these because I never know how to exit those. Um, so we have something else uh, and we build code in it. So you're hopefully all familiar with like VS Code, but we have something similar. Um, so when I do code my script, you can see here I get a nice editor here, uh, which I can work with. Um, so you could use that uh, as well. And then you can even go and easily save using a mouse click or a command or even close it, right? So 
I'm super happy about that feature. But again, it's, it's super easy to actually go and quickly do changes. Now, would I recommend doing that? I probably would recommend that you create your scripts in a GitHub repo, right, and store that. And then guess what? Oops. Git is already there, right? So you have Git, you could just do a Git clone of your repo with all the scripts here and then do that and then basically work with this uh, as well, right? So that, that's probably a good thing. Uh, to do. And that would probably help in some cases, at least for your scripts, when you have multiple environments, multiple uh, cloud shells, you would just store everything in the Git repo and clone that repo into your environments. I know it's probably not solving all your problems, but that, that's, that's something um, you could do. Now, you saw, for example, this export, uh, um, uh, export file commandlet, right? Like this is not necessarily like something we usually have on all our machines. So let's have a look what we actually have in terms of PowerShell. Um, so get all the modules which are available on that machine. And so you can see here we have a ton of stuff here already installed, right? Obviously the AC module is installed and then a couple of other things which you're going to use. Um, again, you can see here Teams, Power BI, uh, Exchange Online and stuff like that, Azure AD, preview stuff. Um, so a lot of different things, but I want to highlight this one real quick. So this is the PS Cloud Shell utility, uh, which I found very interesting when I first looked at it. I was like, well, what is in there, right? So let's do get command module and then paste. And so you get here, you can see a couple of different commands, uh, which are interesting. I'm not going to show you all of that because it's like too much time we need, but there's some interesting stuff, um, especially the AC, VM, PS remoting and things like that, which helps you directly to create remote sessions, like um, interactive remote sessions to, for example, your Azure VMs, right? Uh, so you can do things like that. Um, uh, there's also, like again, like the Cloud Shell uh, stuff as well. So there are a couple of commands built in, uh, which are pretty uh, interesting in that sense. So what I'm actually, so I showed you a little bit, okay, there's a lot of other tools, right, installed um, as well. So if we go and, and have a look at what is actually, what, are, what is this running? Like, what is the cloud shell? I mean, it needs to run somewhere, right? And it's actually a container running in Azure. So think about it, we have already thousands of these containers ready. Uh, and as soon as you come and connect and you authenticate and you request a cloud shell, we assign you one of these containers. We mount the image file, we mount the cloud uh, drive, and then you have your environment. So it's a container, but what is it actually running? So you can see, obviously, that it's not the Windows. Um, so what it's actually running, it's kind of like a version of Ubuntu, at least it says. We're going to have a look what it is. Um, so we know, okay, that, that's what's there. Uh, we can also have a look, by the way, what else is installed. So you can see here, okay, there's a ton of stuff uh, installed on tooling already. Like, I'm not going to like show you, talk to the whole list, but if you're Python, it's again, it's not just about Microsoft, right? It's about a lot of other things uh, too here. So, so that is pretty cool. Um, you can do that. Um, let's do it clear here. So let's go and have a look what this actually is. Obviously, we are Microsoft. We have very good documentation. <clears throat> um, there is a good documentation page talking more about Cloud Shell, what you can use. And again, it's explaining all these different things and how to start and all, all that. Uh, it also talks about the integrated Cloud Shell editor and how storage works and a little bit of the... Um, the concepts of that, right? So for example, with like the 20 minutes timeouts, the five giga storage and, and so on, it talks about that. Um, but interestingly, there's also a list of like what is actually installed and what it is. So install wise, it says Cloud Shell runs on common base Linux. Um, so that's gonna be interesting. We're gonna have a look at that in, in that sense. And then there's some more stuff, um, again, Really cool stuff there, there, but you can also have a list of tooling. So I just want to highlight because it's probably you can see it better um, than what I just showed you in the, in the thing. But you can see here if you're NPM, use NPM, Helm, Cuddle, and so on. Um, all these tools are very ready for you to use, right? And we always regularly update these. So whenever you want to use it, you have the latest um, versions um, there. And probably we should update the documentation because I don't think we run 7.0.0 anymore. Um, that. Good. Now, so I run Cloud Shell uh, in Azure. This, this is a cool admin workstation, right? But um, 
what if I want to run this tool, maybe not in Azure, but run it probably on-prem? Why not run that container on-prem using Docker and use it as an admin? So luckily, the team made this open source, so we can actually see we have a Git repo. So if in Azure Cloud Shell, you can actually on Git, you can actually find here uh, all the stuff. And again, you get some explanation what we are running here. Um, and I get some information how to run it locally, for example. So if I zoom in here, you can see here, very simple that you can take this and you can take it on your laptop, on your uh, wherever you want to run it, um, you can do and, and work with it, right? There's some limitations or some di like differences between when you run in Azure versus when you run uh, on-prem. Obviously, we cannot do the, the identity endpoint. You, like you need to log in then with AC login or, or uh, connect AC account. Uh, so you need to do that. And again, we also explain a little bit how the update process works. Now, more interestingly, if I go to Linux, I can find here the Docker file, how we built that image. So that is pretty cool. And I can actually dive in. And here you can find a lot of comments um, on what it is. You can also see what it's running. And so there's a special uh, version of, of uh, Linux, basically. <laughs> or not, I should not say version, but it's like, a, a common ba base uh, Linux, um, which we're going to use, similar as the one we, what, what did we announce it? The Mariner Linux we use internally. Now, the idea behind this is that we actually can make it more secure than we check all of it, but it's based on a Debian uh, version. So you can see here, I think um, we even mentioned that. The current one here, if I zoom in here, um, you can see here it's based on Debian uh, 10 uh, currently. So that's interesting. And then you can actually go down and you can see here, again, I don't go into details, but you can actually see how do we install all the tools and stuff in our container image. So that's pretty cool. If you want to play around with it or you want to create your own, um, you can take ours and basically modify it, right? And, and work with that. So with that, let me quickly switch. Oh, tell me something else. So if you now want to try this out, for those who haven't really tried out Cloud Shell, there's a couple of awesome things which I want to mention. Um, if I set up Cloud Shell for the first time or start it for the first time, it will look like this. It's a black screen. I'm no, just kidding. Um, just waiting for it to come up. Give it some time. Um, there are some options I can do, like you can just click create. Let me see if I, let's do a restart and see what happens. I just want to show how the trade is. Ah, here we go. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So um, when you first time you start it up, it will ask and tell you that you have not mounted any storage. So you need to have again, you need to have storage, a storage account, uh, basically to create the image and and go on. Um, so there is also what I recommend always some advanced options here. And if you, I'm sure most of you who played with this will know, okay, oh, you need to put it in a resource group, I need to create a storage account, and I can create a file share, I can also use something existing, and I can also place it in Azure region. Now, I showed you, for example, the commands to actually manage stuff, right? But what if I want to access a VM, which is in a private VNet? Like, how do I now, from Cloud Shell, which is public, connect into a VNet? So we have recently, well, it's not that recently, to be honest, it exists for a while now, but um, this little thing here called uh, VNet isolation. So we can actually go in and integrate Cloud Shell and connect it uh, into a virtual network. So you can actually go and when you want to manage it, and from there, you could then do direct SSH connections or PowerShell remoting connections into uh, your Azure VMs running in Azure uh, using a private IP address, right? because it's then placed into your network. So that, that I think is pretty cool. Good stuff to know. Um, yeah. So good. Let me see how much time we have left. Um, connect Cloud Shell. Again, this is just to the, how the VNet integration actually works. Um, it's actually then creating an endpoint in that. Uh, you have to use Azure Relay to actually connect to these things. So uh, if you want to raise more, there's documentation on that. But I just want to make sure that you know about this. And then you have different places to run it. So you can obviously run it in the portal. There's shell.azure.com. You have a VS Code extension. You can also directly run it in the Windows terminal. Quickly, just want to show that. By the way, if you haven't really done that, so it comes per default. You just hit uh, this button here, uh, Cloud Shell. 
And then I logged in already, so, but it asked me, do you want to uh, log in again um, in which tenant, or do you want to connect with another account? So if I do a, a zero here, it should actually sign me in. <laughs> but it doesn't like me today, so uh, we're going to skip that part. I'm not going to troubleshoot it. Uh, maybe I need to re-log in again because I haven't done it for a while. Uh, however, you would get obviously the same experience, the same cloud shell, like the same files you just saw, also in my Windows terminal as well. And then obviously I have integration into docs.com, you have seen that, there's a try it button, which also helps you to do some certain stuff. And then there's the Azure mobile app. Who uses the Azure mobile app? Okay, couple of hands, okay. So think about the scenario, I, I now did my work today and I go into a bar and I forgot something. So how, what do I do, right? So I open up, um, the cloud shell, uh, uh, the mobile app, the Azure mobile app on my phone. You can see here I can browse my resources and stuff and I can do some management options. But I can also start up cloud shell. So I can request the cloud shell I had and can on my phone, again, it loads, obviously, you can see here it is Thomas. And now I can type and do my intensive admin task while drinking a beer in the bar on my phone. Not sure if it's a really good idea though, but um, it's definitely something you can do. And you can see here, I can do my script folders and all that stuff I stored there. And then actually run these scripts uh, directly on my phone, right? Um, again, not sure how big the scenario is for that, but it's pretty cool if you think about it, like if you don't have a notebook and you're on call or something like that, or something happens and you need to help, um, you could, then basically use the same tools you get in Cloud Shell to do some remote admin stuff. And log in basically from anywhere, right? Wherever you are, as long as you have access to Azure, um, you can, can do that. Okay, there is some other cool stuff I want to talk about. AC Predictor, for example. Uh, there's another great session, I think today at three, if I'm correct, um, by Steven. Um, we will go more into like the predictors in PowerShell and so on. But what I want to show you here is just a little bit how it works uh, or how you can use it, leverage it. Um, the good thing is, uh, here we go. So if I'm in, in my shell here, um, I'm not very good in thinking about certain stuff, right? So I, I want to, for example, create a new VM, but what do I need to do, right? Like new VM, so okay, I start with new AC. VM. And you can see I already installed it, so it gives me predictions now on what I want to do. So with new AC, obviously I get a lot of stuff, so let's type new VM. And then you can see here I get a lot of different information here. I, I chose the list view, so I get a lot of like in list. You can have also an inline view um, to actually see what, what it is. It makes it a little bit smaller, but I like that view. So you can actually go and say new AC VM, and then you can go down. Um, or let's do new AC Let's make it a little bit different. Storage account. Um, so there's this uh, storage account thing. Uh, and now I, the only thing, it takes this example, you can see here the predictor. Uh, it, you can see the source on the right side here. It says AC predictor. That's the predictor module, which actually goes in and says, okay, I take that information from things like documentation and stuff like that. There's also history. So if I use the command before, then it will show me, okay, hey, that you run that before you want to reuse it. Now, obviously, I don't want to create a resource group called my resource group and my storage account and so on. So I want to go edit. Now, there's a very simple trick now to do this. So if you press Alt A, you can switch and you can do like test RG and then Alt A and you do like test storage, blah, blah, blah. Alt A and then change it. You get the point, right? You can all easily quickly go through all the parameters, do it, hit enter and fire your command. So it's super useful um, if you work with the AC module. And there are other predictors as well. Again, if you want to learn more about this, um, join the session of Stephen at three o'clock uh, today. So to, by the way, just enable that. I also mentioned there is uh, two commands here. Um, like the list view and the inline view, I didn't really show. You can switch between those two, by the way, using F2. Um, I really like the list view, and I'm sure Steven is going to show you uh, the different options there uh, as well. And again, there are more predictors, not just for Azure, but also for other things. Another thing I want to show you is, okay, how do I run commands against VMs, right? Like, okay, we're running Azure VMs. Now, usually I need to have like a VPN set up. I need to have some network connectivity, but we have some other stuff, which a lot of people really don't know about, and I'm actually, well, that's why I'm actually showing it. So if we go into our Azure environment and I go to virtual machines, 
Let's select the virtual machine here. Uh, this is a Windows virtual machine. Obviously, it also works with Linux. If I scroll down, you can see here uh, we have run command. Who has used run command? OK, good. A couple of hands again, like a quarter maybe, a little bit less. So if I do run command, uh, you can see we give you a couple of options already to quickly restore, for example, the RTP settings in the Windows world. And we have other ones for Linux as well. But we have obviously like super like simple scripts here. And then you can also say just I want to run my own script. So I could like enter my copy paste my script here. So I'm doing like run service. And that's pretty good. Like it will take a moment because now how we connect is we use the, um, the, the Azure APIs. And from there, we connect through the guest agent running in the Azure VM, right? So we don't need to have a, v, uh, a network connectivity to run that command to an Azure VM. So that's pretty cool, in my opinion. Um, but there is more. Now, obviously, there's also PowerShell, uh, a PowerShell command. So I can do things like invoke a command using PowerShell. Um, and then just, for example, in this case, I'm just giving a script file. Uh, to that uh, folder and then basically run it against my machine and it gives me some backend. Again, this will run for a moment. So if I go back here, by the way, this can now get me back the services. As you can see here, just like the output of that script I uh, have run. Now, while this command is running again, it will take a while. I also want to quickly show you this. Um, and this is the power of like, okay, I'm choosing the AC command, but also PowerShell 7, right? Um, so people were t asking me, okay, so I'm not managing, I don't want to run the script against one VM. I want to run it against like my 100 VMs I run in Azure. I want to do something. So obviously I can do that. So I created a script to help them to like do a simple <laughs> for each, basically go through all the VMs in a subscription and do that. And obviously you can modify that. But you can imagine now you, if you go back, you can see here, this takes a while until it runs against the machine. Think about it now, that times 100. Um, so the power with PowerShell 7 comes here with this little thing here, uh, which we also saw in the keynote um, with the parallel thing. So obviously you can, can easily do that and um, uh, run it against multiple machines. So for people who want to take a picture, go ahead. There's also a good blog on a, on, on a post by, written by uh, me. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, well, I, have, I have online documented it. Let's put it that way. So that, that's pretty cool stuff. Uh, again, works with PowerShell, also works with the Azure CLI. And obviously, you can run it from Cloud Shell too, right? Obviously. Good. So this is the command. Um, now, this works against servers running in Azure. I can run a script, right? Um, who is here familiar with Azure Arc? OK. Five, six hands. OK. Obviously, we are not just having servers in Azure. Um, even then, Microsoft would hope that. Um, uh, it would be definitely good for the stock price. But we obviously have servers like running on-prem, and that those will not go away. So we have something called Azure Arc. And I don't want to go too deep in what Azure Arc can do. But one thing Azure Arc can do is connect our existing servers running outside of Azure um, to the Azure control plane. So these, they, they look now like they're Azure resources, but those are all servers running either at my local data center underneath my desk at home um, or at other locations. It could be also other cloud providers and so on. I connected them up. Uh, if I look at one of these resources, I can actually go and manage it, right? I can go and do some management stuff, uh, which is great. But what we recently showed is the possibility uh, to create a remote connection. So let me quickly switch to, to this here. So using the Azure CLI, I can now create an SSH connections. Uh, let's do this one first. Um, if I zoom in here, you can see here, oops, that was a trick zoom. Uh, AC SSH, ARC, resource group of that server, uh, name of that server, and then I added local user. If I hit enter, I can now create an SSH connection, an interactive SSH connection, going through the ad to Azure, and from Azure, going back to that server. And it's not an inbound connect, like it's not an outgoing uh, or an incoming connection to that server. On that server, I installed the Azure Arc agent. That's why it showed up in the portal. And now I can basically have that connection go, go and manage that. It works also with key files. If you set this up, 
in this case, I just use a password. And you can see I'm now connected to that server. And again, that server is running at my home. And I'm quickly, no VPN, nothing, just using the Azure control plane, a secure way of connecting. Obviously, everything is encrypted, the whole traffic there. Um, and so I can start managing this. Now, let's close that connection, do something else. Um, one thing is just pretty cool here is that I can not just use a local user. If I set it up, I can also make it possible to log in with an Azure AD user into that server, right? If it's a Linux machine, uh, I can currently do that. So if I just take away the local user option, um, I get that, and then who am I? And you can see here, uh, that's now using my for the same machine using my Azure ID account. Um, so that is pretty cool. Now you say, okay, well, Thomas, enough Linux here. Um, let's do a Windows machine. Uh, and if I would be smart enough. Okay, there we go. Let's do this. Luckily, I placed everything in the same resource group. So I have a server called apps Year one I'm not sure if you saw in the portal. That's a Windows machine. I enabled OpenSSH on that. And now I basically have my Windows here. Um, I remoted into that. I can obviously also go into PowerShell and then do host name, for example. And you can see here I'm in that app Zero one Again, it doesn't matter where that server is running. As long as that server, the agent on that server has a connection to Azure, I can actually go out and, and manage that. So that is that is pretty cool, I guess. Um, oh, in this case, I'm like uh, using a local user. So uh, let's also do a who am I just so you see it. In this case, I'm using it like Thomas as the domain user. Um, uh, we do not currently support the Azure AD authentication with Windows machines, um, but it's something people definitely want. Uh, we heard that, but um, right now I'm just using a local user on that machine. Can be a domain user, can also be a local user on the machine itself. Sorry? If so the question is if the Azure AD integration into Windows Server uh, is supported. I cannot answer that question. <laughs> um, no, it's, uh, it's definitely something we heard before. Um, again, that's why we're also offering for that. And then last but not least, I really want to show you the last cool thing. Now you would say, okay, SSH connection, Thomas, this is fine. We committed, I think, already to saying we will make a PowerShell remoting work in the same way. Um, but what we... Um, what you can use, how you can use PowerShell today already actively. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Um, if you want to connect to one of these servers, um, there's something cool built in. And again, it doesn't necessarily have to do with PowerShell in general, but we just released that, I think, last week. It's called the Windows Admin Center Integration. So now if I want to do some, like, obviously we have tools like update management and policy, which are all pretty cool, defender integration for that server now. And this server is also running. Um, uh, this now currently I manage that this is one in, running in our Redmond data centers, right? With, again, no VPN, nothing. So if I want to manage that, I can open up. Oops, that's the wrong one then. Let's go to, go to app zero one. I hope that one works. I need to check. Let's do... Let's do my Hyper-V server. I think that should work. That's the one at home. So I set this up already. I have Windows Admin Center here. And now I have a connect button. Like this, you could saw there was one setup button. I need to hit that once. It takes a couple of minutes to set it up. So I'm, it's not very good for a demo. So I'm just using the existing one. So hitting connect here. Um, it opens up Windows Admin Center. And I'm sure if you're Windows Admin, you've heard of that before. Uh, and it opens up in the Azure portal. Nothing installed, nothing to do for me. Just sign in with a local user. And now I can manage my server um, running at home in this case uh, from the Azure portal with all these different tools here. Um, like I can do certificate management, device management, event views, all that stuff I can do with like Windows Admin Center if I installed it by myself. I can now directly do from the Azure portal without installing anything. Uh, but I want to show you is here is also obviously PowerShell. If there is something now I want to do interactively on the machine, which I can't do through these tools, I can hit PowerShell uh, and it will open up a remote PowerShell connection uh, to that server <laughs> if it would work on that machine. I knew that this one didn't, didn't finish um, the setup. So, uh, but this is how I could then actually manage that and I can run also commands against that server uh, for that. 
So I see there's a question. Just give me a second um, to wrap things up, and then I can open it up for questions in general. So Arc-enabled servers, PowerShell. If you want to learn more, by the way, here is the blog post about CloudShell, where I have like a ton of other features which are based there in CloudShell, where you can go through. It's a little bit older one. There's definitely new stuff in that as well, but a lot of the basic features which are there as well, if, especially also if you are a developer and you want to test things out, great tool. Um, so I want to open it up for Q&A. Um, so we have one question here. <laughs> so the question is if you can run Azure Arc on clients. Um, Azure Arc is really aimed on server operating system. It runs on Windows and Linux machines um, running outside of Azure. Now, that said, yes, there are ways. It's not supported, but you can actually do it. There are some other benefits, by the way. If you do this, and I know there's a lot of scripters in the room, um, I can use the custom script extension, which I can use against Azure VMs, also against Arc VM servers. And every Arc-enabled server, by the way, gets a managed identity. So I can, like, when I run scripts, for example, I can now use a managed identity on a server running on-prem, right? That's another big benefit I want to highlight with Arc uh, as well. So are there any other questions? I know we went through a lot of different things, but I hope I gave you some great ideas. Definitely don't miss the session of Pierre Romain tomorrow. Uh, um, which time? Free. Free. And then the session of Stephen uh, later um, today, uh, also at free, uh, when it comes to the AC predictor stuff. Um, so, again, I want to, we still have three minutes, so if you have any, any more questions, please let me know. And other than, other than that, I would give you some time to get some food. Oh, one more. <laughs> If Bastion works through Arc. So I think I saw a, a announcement of the Bastion team to also go back to uh, on-prem servers. But it has to be set up through the network uh, way. It's not that it goes through Arc, like the existing uh, Arc connections, but it uses the, like, if you have a side-to-side -side VPN, I think there's currently a preview going through the Azure network and then back down. Um, that I know, but it doesn't currently leverage in Arc in that way. Yeah, doesn't use the agent itself at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, otherwise, I'm here, obviously, the whole day today. Uh, also going to the social event. If you want to chat, feel free to reach out. And with that, I want to say thank you very much and enjoy lunch. <laughs>